Did you know that most of our frustrations and struggles come from unchecked desires and the inability to manage them? If you want to take control of your life and live with purpose, you need to audit and manage your desires effectively. Avoid this mistake, letting your wants dictate your actions instead of aligning them with your values and goals. It's time to break free from unnecessary suffering by understanding your internal compass and learning how to channel your energy into meaningful actions. So stick around because the next few points will transform how you approach control, perspective and self-mastery. Number one, focus on your circle of control. Happiness often comes in those serene moments when life feels manageable. A lazy Sunday morning sipping coffee while the world outside seems to quiet down. In those fleeting seconds, everything feels like it's in its rightful place. But how often do we find that fragile peace shattered? Perhaps by an unexpected work email or an unsettling piece of news. The modern world throws countless distractions and stresses at us, yet there's an empowering realization waiting just beneath the surface we don't have to carry the weight of the entire world. Instead, we can focus on what is firmly within our grasp, our circle of control. At the heart of Stoicism lies the profound understanding of the dichotomy of control. The ancient philosopher Epictetus divided life into two categories, things we can control and things we cannot. Within our control lie our actions, thoughts, reactions and decisions. Everything else, the weather, the opinions of others, global politics, is beyond our influence. The beauty of focusing on our circle of control is that it frees us from the unnecessary mental burden of trying to fix the unfixable. Consider this, how much energy do you spend worrying about someone else's opinion or stressing over hypothetical situations that may never happen? Redirecting that energy to what you can actually influence, your mindset, your habits, your choices, can transform not only your productivity, but your peace of mind. Think back to a time when life felt overwhelming. Maybe it was a hectic week with deadlines looming and personal commitments piling up. Amid the chaos, there might have been a moment when you decided to take a step back and tackle just one thing within your control. Perhaps you started by organizing your desk or making a to-do list. Remember how that small act of control made the entire situation feel a little more manageable? That's the power of narrowing your focus to what truly matters. It's a reminder that no matter how complicated life gets, we always have a choice in how we respond. Imagine what your days could look like if you consistently practice this. What if, instead of trying to change the unchangeable, you doubled down on improving yourself? How would it feel to let go of unnecessary stress and reclaim your energy for things that truly matter? The next time life feels chaotic, ask yourself, is this within my control? And if it's not, what would happen if you simply let it go? Number two, zoom out for perspective and the view from above. Picture yourself standing on a mountaintop, the world spread out beneath you. The trees look like tiny specks, roads intertwine like veins, and the noise of daily life seems to fade into insignificance. In that moment, your problems feel smaller, your worries lighter. This is the transformative power of perspective, and it's a lesson the Stoics embraced wholeheartedly. The view from above invites us to step back from the minutiae of our daily struggles and see the bigger picture. Marcus Aurelius, one of history's great Stoic philosophers, often wrote about the importance of zooming out. In his meditations, he would remind himself of the vastness of the universe and the fleeting nature of human life. This wasn't to diminish the value of his existence, but to put it in context. When we step back and see our lives as part of a much larger whole, the petty arguments, fleeting disappointments, and day-to-day -day anxieties lose their overwhelming grip. It becomes easier to focus on what truly matters. 
living a virtuous, meaningful life. Think back to a time when you were consumed by a problem that felt all-encompassing. Maybe it was a mistake at work or a disagreement with a loved one. At the moment, it felt like the end of the world, but weeks, months or years later, that same issue might barely register in your memory. This shift in perspective shows how temporary most of our worries are. The Stoics understood this and encouraged us to zoom out regularly to remind ourselves that life's storms are often smaller than they appear. What if you could access that clarity whenever you needed it? Imagine practicing the view from above in moments of stress, mentally stepping back to see your problems in the context of your entire life, your community, and even humanity as a whole. How might this change your approach to challenges? Would it make you more compassionate, patient, or focused on what truly matters? Perspective doesn't erase difficulties, but it helps us navigate them with wisdom and grace. Number three, use the power of now. Happiness isn't found in the past or the future. It's in the fleeting beauty of the present moment. Imagine savoring a meal with friends where laughter echoes and time seems to stand still. Or picture yourself watching a sunset, completely immersed in its colors, without a single intrusive thought of what's next. These moments remind us of a truth we often forget life happens now. Yet, so much of our energy is spent ruminating on the past or worrying about the future. What would happen if we fully embraced the power of now? The Stoics believed deeply in the value of living in the present. Seneca, in particular, warned against wasting time, arguing that most of life slips away unnoticed because we're not truly present. The present moment is the only place where we have power. Power to act, to think, and to feel. Dwelling on past mistakes or future uncertainties only robs us of the richness of now. It's like trying to drive a car while staring in the rearview mirror or focusing too far down the road. The result? We miss what's directly in front of us. Do you remember a time when you were fully present? Maybe it was playing with your child, feeling their joy and energy. Or perhaps it was a quiet moment, like sitting by a fire on a cold evening. Those memories stand out, not because they were extraordinary, but because you were truly there, savoring every second. Presence turns the ordinary into something magical. It allows us to appreciate the small things, a kind word, a gentle breeze, or even the simple act of breathing. What if you made a habit of being more present? How would your relationships improve if you gave others your undivided attention? How much more fulfilling would your work be if you approached each task with focus and intention? Embracing the power of now isn't just about mindfulness. It's about reclaiming the moments that make life worth living. Number four, audit and manage your desires. Imagine a world where every whim you've ever had is immediately fulfilled. At first, it sounds like a utopia, never needing to wait, never grappling with longing. But would that world truly bring you happiness? If every desire is met without effort or reflection, would the satisfaction last? This thought experiment reveals an essential truth. Desires are powerful forces that shape our lives, but unchecked, they can lead to dissatisfaction and chaos. To live meaningfully, we must master our desires instead of being mastered by them. Desires often start as sparks of motivation, pushing us toward goals or rewarding us for achievements. But in today's consumer-driven world, they can morph into insatiable cravings. Every advertisement, social media post, or influencer subtly suggests that happiness lies just one purchase or accomplishment away. Consider your own life. How many times have you pursued something, a new gadget, a promotion, or even validation from others, only to find the joy it brought was fleeting? This cycle of want, acquire, and want again is exhausting, and it can leave you feeling empty. The first step in managing your desires 
is recognizing their root. Desires are not inherently bad. In fact, some are necessary for survival, such as the desire for food, shelter and companionship. However, many of the desires that dominate our lives are unnecessary or even harmful. These are the desires that lead to overindulgence, debt and stress. Ask yourself how many of your current goals are shaped by societal pressures rather than your true values? Are you chasing what you want or what others tell you to want? Auditing your desires requires brutal honesty. Start by making a list of the things you currently yearn for. These could range from material possessions to career aspirations to personal relationships. For each item on the list, ask yourself three questions. Why do I want this? What will I gain by having it? And does this align with my long-term goals? For example, if you desire a luxurious car, is it because you need reliable transportation? Or is it because you want to impress others? By dissecting your desires, you can separate the meaningful from the superficial. The ancient Stoics believed that mastering desires was key to living a tranquil life. Epictetus famously said, Wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. This philosophy encourages you to focus on sufficiency rather than abundance. One practical application is the idea of voluntary deprivation. By occasionally going without luxuries, you can remind yourself of what truly matters. For instance, choosing to live a day without technology or eating a simple meal can help you appreciate the essentials and detach from excess. Number five, practice negative visualization. Imagine waking up one morning to find that everything you hold dear, your home, your family, your health is gone. It's a jarring thought, isn't it? Yet this exercise is not meant to instill fear, but gratitude. By contemplating loss, you begin to see the immense value in what you already have. This practice, known as negative visualization, is a cornerstone of Stoic philosophy and a powerful tool for cultivating resilience and perspective. Negative visualization is not about pessimism or dwelling on worst-case scenarios. Instead, it's about mentally rehearsing challenges to prepare yourself emotionally and mentally. In doing so, you build a mindset that can face adversity with grace. Think of it as emotional strength training, just as lifting weights strengthens your muscles. Contemplating loss strengthens your ability to cope with life's inevitable difficulties. The practice is surprisingly simple yet profound. Start by identifying something you value deeply your job, your relationships, or even your daily routine. Then, imagine life without it. For example, picture a day where your phone doesn't work and you can't rely on technology. At first it may feel frustrating, but as you adapt, you'll realize how much you take for granted. This exercise helps you appreciate what you have and fosters a sense of contentment. Negative visualization also prepares you for life's uncertainties. Imagine losing a job, facing rejection, or experiencing a health scare. While these scenarios are uncomfortable, mentally rehearsing them reduces their power to overwhelm you if they ever occur. You become less reactive and more proactive, ready to adapt and respond effectively. This practice has a profound effect on your emotional well-being. By imagining life without your possessions, you begin to detach from materialism. By contemplating the loss of loved ones, you learn to cherish your time with them. Negative visualization shifts your focus from what you lack to what you have, cultivating a mindset of gratitude and resilience. Take a moment to reflect on your own life. When was the last time you truly appreciated something before it was gone? Perhaps it was a relationship, a job, or even your health. By practicing negative visualization, you can break this cycle of neglect and regret. You learn to live with greater awareness and appreciation, savoring the present moment. 
the Stoics believed that negative visualization was not just a tool for gratitude, but for courage. Seneca wrote, He robs present ills of their power who has perceived their coming beforehand. By preparing for challenges, you strip them of their ability to paralyze you. Life becomes less daunting because you've already faced its trials in your mind. Negative visualization is not about living in fear of loss. It's about living fully, aware of life's impermanence and grateful for its gifts. When practiced regularly, it transforms your perspective, helping you find joy and strength in the face of adversity. Number 6. Amor Fati. Love your fate. Imagine looking back on your life and feeling no regret, no bitterness, no resentment, only acceptance and gratitude. This is the essence of Amor Fati, a Latin phrase that means love of fate. It's not just about accepting what happens to you, but embracing it wholeheartedly as a necessary part of your journey. Amor Fati is a radical concept because it challenges the natural human tendency to resist pain and adversity. When life throws challenges your way, the instinctive reaction is often to ask, why me? Or to dwell on how unfair it is. But what if instead you could see every obstacle as an opportunity? What if you could learn to love even the difficulties because they shape who you are? The Stoics believed that everything in life happens for a reason, even if that reason isn't immediately clear. Marcus Aurelius wrote, A blazing fire makes flame and brightness out of everything thrown into it. This metaphor captures the spirit of Amor Fati. Just as fire transforms everything it consumes into light and heat, you can transform every experience, good or bad, into growth and wisdom. Consider a time in your life when things didn't go as planned. Perhaps you faced a setback at work, a broken relationship, or a personal failure. At the time, it may have felt devastating. But looking back, you might realize that those experiences taught you valuable lessons or led to unexpected opportunities. This hindsight is the foundation of Amor Fati. By embracing life as it unfolds, you free yourself from the burden of regret and the illusion of control. Practicing Amor Fati requires a shift in perspective. Instead of resisting life's challenges, lean into them. See them as necessary steps on your path, even if they're painful or inconvenient. This mindset doesn't mean you have to enjoy suffering, but it does mean finding meaning in it. For example, if you lose a job, instead of lamenting the loss, focus on the opportunities it creates. A chance to pursue a new career, learn new skills, or reassess your priorities. Gratitude plays a crucial role in Amor Fati. By appreciating every aspect of your life, even the difficult parts, you cultivate a sense of wholeness and acceptance. Imagine waking up each day and saying, thank you for whatever comes your way. This simple practice can transform your relationship with life, helping you find peace and joy even in adversity. Amor Fati is not about passivity or resignation. It's about active engagement with life, seeing every moment as a gift. When you embrace this philosophy, you become resilient, adaptable and unshakable. You learn to dance with life, no matter the rhythm, and find beauty in every step. Number 7. Channel frustration into constructive action. Life is full of frustrations, traffic jams, missed opportunities, conflicts with loved ones. These moments can leave you feeling powerless and overwhelmed, but frustration, when channeled correctly, can be a powerful force for positive change. Instead of letting it consume you, you can use it as fuel to take constructive action and move forward. Frustration often arises from unmet expectations. You plan for something to go one way and it goes another. In these moments, it's easy to spiral into anger or despair. But what if you could see frustration as a signal, a call to action? The Stoics believed that every obstacle is an opportunity to practice virtue. When you face frustration, you have a choice succumb to it 
or use it as a catalyst for growth. To channel frustration constructively, start by pausing. Take a deep breath and acknowledge your feelings without judgment. This moment of mindfulness creates space between the stimulus and your response, allowing you to choose a more productive path. For example, if you're frustrated with a colleague at work, instead of reacting impulsively, use the energy of your frustration to address the issue calmly and constructively. Another powerful strategy is reframing. Instead of seeing frustration as a roadblock, view it as a challenge to overcome. Imagine you're trying to learn a new skill and you keep failing. Instead of giving up, let your frustration motivate you to try harder. Each failure becomes a step toward mastery and your persistence pays off in the end. Frustration can also be a source of creativity. Many great inventions, works of art and social movements were born out of frustration with the status quo. When you feel frustrated, ask yourself, what can I do to change this situation? How can I turn this energy into something meaningful? By channeling your frustration into action, you transform it from a negative emotion into a powerful force for good. Lastly, remember that frustration often comes from caring deeply. If you didn't care, you wouldn't feel frustrated. This perspective can help you reconnect with your values and priorities. So, if you've made it this far, drop another comment below to let me know you're ready to take charge of your mindset and actions. Drop a hundred if you've watched this far. This shows that you're part of the small percentage of people who are committed to personal growth and finishing what they start. Remember, change begins with awareness and action. And by applying these principles, you're on the path to creating a better, more intentional life. If you're serious about transforming your life and mastering the art of self-control and perspective, make sure to join our channel by subscribing. We share powerful insights and strategies to help you build the life you truly want. Don't miss out on these life-changing lessons. Hit that subscribe button now and let's take this journey together.